I was uh, 19 uh, when uh, I lived in uh, Quebec City. I had left home uh, to be on my own and uh, working in Quebec City. I came in contact with uh, a number of uh, other young fellows who were, and some of them going into the service. That's where I got the idea. And it wouldn't have been long anyway because uh, anybody my age uh, couldn't, you couldn't get a job because people, uh, didn't want to hire you. You're too close to the draft age when you got to go into the service, you know. I joined the Air Force there and I was sent up to Toronto and uh, carried on from there. Uh, I was uh, trained in uh, St. Catharines, Ontario initially in Brantford, Ontario, which is where I uh, I was I received the wings of a pilot. I had been interested in airplanes when I right from uh, as far back as I I can think, uh, and uh, the Air Force was what I wanted. My brother. Was in the who was in the army uh, had wanted to get into the Air Force, but he was at that time uh, he was a little too old, I guess. He was 27. <laughs> it was a young man's business, I guess. The Air Force sent me out to uh, an instructor school at Armprior, Ontario. And uh, I trained to be an instructor. I didn't like that too much, but you had to go where you had to go, you know. And uh, I was sent out to uh, McDonald, Manitoba as a staff pilot at a bombing and gunnery school. And uh, I spent a little over a year there. And uh, from there, I went overseas. <laughs> I got over there and I was uh, uh, trained on uh, the Dakota Aircraft, which is the Air Transport Command. And I uh, I was stationed in southern England. And uh, our job was uh, to fly over to the continent various uh, airfields over there and pick up uh, priority wounded uh, fellows who were uh, badly wounded and needed a immediate care. We had nurses on board and uh, we uh, flew them back to England. It was an interesting business. It's, it brought us right up to, uh, we were right in close to the uh, uh, front lines. Uh, well, not front lines, but close to the action uh, in uh, Eindhoven, uh, Holland. You know. I was assigned from there and trained uh, for India and Burma. I got my training, my extra training for the kind of flying I was going to do out there and uh, away we went. I, I remember f flying out to uh, India. Uh, it took us uh, 34 flying hours I don't know what it takes now, but it certainly is much more than 
10 or 12 hours. And uh, as assigned to a squadron there, we were, uh, uh, we flew all through the monsoon. Um, same sort of thing as I was doing in England, in the continent. But uh, we were in tents all through the monsoon. If you can imagine what that would be, when the rain coming down and just poured. I, I never want to go back there again. <laughs> yeah. Well, what we were doing was carrying uh, supplies and, and uh, personnel over the Arakan Mountains and then to uh, central Burma. Uh, the uh, personnel and uh, the, uh, the loads, well, the loads we were taking over the mountains were brought in by ship to uh, an island just off the coast of Burma. It's called Ramery Island. And uh, we offloaded in various fields in uh, the uh, 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 central Burma. <laughs> Living in those tents, uh, I'll never forget. <laughs> we, we were assigned a tent and uh, go ahead and put it up, you know. <laughs> you had to go and, and slash slash the uh, brush around and uh, I'll never forget the size of the ants there, you know, they were about <laughs> an inch long at least. Yeah. But, uh, then we put these little troughs around the tent to uh, catch the water and drain it off. Well, by the time the monsoon was well in, those trenches were about the, yeah. I guess, I guess the toughest part of the whole business, as far as I was concerned anyway, was uh, the tough part flying over the mountains where the sky was just full of water, it was green. <laughs> we had uh, water pouring in under the uh, the windshields of the old Dakota and uh, thunderstorms around there were, were something else. Uh, you might say we're, we're in the jungle. We're flying off um, runways that were being maintained by the American Seabees and as fast as the the uh, one runway would be put into sh good shape and we were using it. The other runway would have washed out with the tremendous rain and they were all built on sand. I had a bearer assigned to me to take care of the, my tent. He was a 14-year-old boy and uh, he came from a village up the Arakan coast. He came to me one day and he says, Sub, I am going to be married. I said, what? <laughs> yeah, he said, I have to go. So I let him go and gave him a few annas, uh, the coin, you know. And uh, he went away and came back married, 14 years old. <laughs> Good kid. Any villages in the area were very, very small, uh, perhaps uh, three or four families, uh, what they were before uh, the war, I don't know. Yeah, I was assigned to the RAF uh, as, actually as soon as I got to England. I never did fly, on a, fly out of a, a Canadian squadron. A lot of us were uh, with the RAF out there. 
we tried to put in a hundred flying hours a month. That was our assignment. And I, I did, I did about a hundred hours every month I was out there. Um, never saw a Jap. I don't think... Uh, we flew some um, of the uh, German army out of wounded out of uh, Europe back to England, uh, wounded uh, soldiers and so forth. But out in Burma, I never saw it. I don't think uh, they took any prisoners out there because the Japanese didn't take any of our boys either. Yeah. I, I took off from a place called Akyab and uh, it was around 11 o'clock in the morning, which is a bad time out there. It's so hot and humid, you know. But anyway, it affects the performance of the airplane. I, I got about uh, halfway down the runway, and I thought, gee, this, this airplane is not accelerating as much as it normally would. But I uh, thought, uh, just hang on for me. Boy, by the time I got to the end of the runway, I was, uh, I think I, I was in the air, but just barely. And I managed to get over the trees and got away with it anyway. I, what we were was overloaded. Found that out because I landed at the first uh, airfield down the coast, and uh, <clears throat> that's when we found I was overloaded. Another instance, uh, taking off out of Ramry Island, and uh, I, uh, we got airborne too close to the end of the runway. At that time, I had to do a, what we called a ground loop. <laughs> Ended up going backwards with the airplane, you know, but still on the runway, of course. <laughs> I would say half the pilots on the squadron I was on, which was called 31 Squadron, RAF, uh, about half the pilots were uh, Canadians. Yeah. And there was a Canadian squadron in this. We were part of a big wing on the island. And we had uh, Americans as well as uh, a complete Canadian squadron. I guess one of the toughest things I saw out there was I was in what they call a circuit coming around to land and uh, I saw this uh, uh, American uh, uh, airplane, a fighter, coming in to land and uh, he, just, he just came over the shoreline and uh, I hit this truck, a truck that was passing the end of the runway. And I guess he, he was so slow that he, he couldn't uh, do anything. And uh, I thought, my God, that's, that's got to be fate to have the truck and himself in a place. Uh, as soon as the uh, Japanese surrender hit, we took our airplanes. By this time, uh, we had uh, set ourselves up in uh, uh, Mingledon Airport at Rangoon. Uh, we were only there a couple of days and uh, the, the war was over. And it was a great push to get the POW, so that was, I was amazed at how fast that was laid on. Uh, you know, one day we're um, working away in Burma, and next, every airplane is into the air, down to Singapore, and uh, flying over to uh, what they call Indonesia, Batavia, uh, 
and uh, Sumatra. We flew the uh, the POWs out. Never forget they they were so skinny. They were just skinny rakes. Uh, Japanese had put new uniforms on them and uh, made it look good. I guess I didn't think too much of that. Yeah. So we we uh, uh, kept that up for a while, and then uh, the word came from uh, uh, Canadian Air Force headquarters that we were to be repatriated. So we left the squadron uh, and left it to the the British. And what was it like to come back to Canada? What was the homecoming like? Well, it was it was a bit sad for me. But, uh, my mother died uh, just a few days after I arrived in uh, St. Catharines. She had a heart condition. 1946, and uh, I was going to school in Hamilton to finish my uh, high school. I hoped to go on from there. But uh, the Central School, I think, was called in in Hamilton. I was boarding there, uh, boarding in Hamilton, and going to school. The school burnt down one night. <laughs> Just a tremendous uh, event there at the time. And uh, then we were dispersed to uh, go home. So I, uh, our home uh, had been pretty well dissolved. My brothers had taken off in their uh, endeavors. I got uh, going out, I thought, I wonder if I can get a job uh, flying. So I applied to what was then TransCanada Airlines, it's Air Canada now, and uh, I guess I had just what they wanted from all the Transport Command uh, experience flying overseas, and I got hired. That was a that was big for me. I, I, I just couldn't understand. I couldn't think of what I was going to do.